the interviews with Jordan Maxwell on hidden symbolism around us and the mantra that he gave, quote, things are not as they seem, plus past guest Dr. Joe Slate's work of studying the human arc field with the military apply to this week's show. Together with Dr. Carmen Bolter's consciousness measuring device and a cursory understanding of Peter Shampo's geomancy, plus Richard Cassaro's book, Written in Stone, these all provide an important backdrop to the work of author and occult researcher Matthew Deleuze. He is one of the first to articulate how hypnotism and symbolism is used to spiritually imprison and control the collective subconscious of the human race. One facet of this grand manipulation is the placing of specific monuments on energy lines by giving our attention or praying to these structures or symbols the human race has been tricked into giving away emotional respect to idols and occult monuments. This fleecing of spiritual energy through the subconscious at events such as festivals, arenas, museums, and cathedrals isn't new. This has been going on for thousands of years. We're at the bottom of the wheel, according to Dr. Carmen Bolter. Matthew Deleuze says that this is the work of the serpent cult, as he calls them now. They know our DNA, and so our weaknesses show up on their genetic maps. Remember Richard Cassaro, author of Written in Stone, mentioned this concept with the Shell Oil logo and how in the collective subconscious it's known that at one time humans used shells as currency. The Shell logo taps into the collective cellular memory. Matthew Deleuze expounds on these ideas in his article and books, He's the author of three books, You Will Be Wiser When You're Older, The Stars Are Falling, Reasons to Believe We're Enslaved by the Serpent, and Is It Me for a Moment Breaking the Serpent's Spell. His website is matthewdeleuze.blogspot.com, and that's where you can find many of his past articles, such as Spitting Out the Feathers of the Bennu Bird, The Illuminati Monuments of Paris Exposed. Matthew, welcome to In Other News. Thanks for having me, uh, Jeff. I'm glad to be back speaking to you. Well, it certainly is uh, wonderful that you're back online and we can find your websites now and articles and then get your books. Your work actually connects to the body of information from the past few guests that we've had on, on the show. It takes a turn that I think some listeners may may not expect, but it is part of your research that I think is very important for a lot of people to understand. Can you tell how um, you began to find out how monuments and occult symbols have been placed on energy lines that affect people, and how do they affect people? Well, uh, I have to go back quite a long time. I was told by a psychic in the mid-90s that I would go through some very traumatic experiences and I would suffer financially, emotionally, uh, and reach a point where I wouldn't want to live anymore. Obviously, I didn't believe it at the time when I heard it. I I didn't even think uh, I'd come anywhere near that. But life passed on, and I did, to cut a long story short, I did reach that point. I reached a point in my life where I was emotionally traumatised to the extent that I didn't want to live. And then one day, I was in working in a factory. I, work, I was a factory worker in a, in a hometown in Burnley, Lancashire, which obviously, if you link to ley lines, I live in a, in a, in a town with, that ends in ley, Burnley. And I had a, a foreman, my boss was bullying the hell out of me, uh, making my life a misery. And one day, he forced me to climb up a ladder to clean a massive autoclave machine in a clean room in an aerospace factory. Now, the room itself had so many chemicals in it. It was covered in carbon. It, it, it was a, a very strange room. I don't think you'd find another one within a hundred mile of where I was at the time. And as I, I went up this ladder, I suddenly had a terrific electric type of shock run down my spine. I dropped a bucket on a carrying at the time, and I, I literally turned into another person. Now, I can imagine some of your listeners thinking, we've got a real lunatic here. But I'm only explaining what happened. I came down from the ladder, never the man I used to be. 
I don't know. My, my body was changed so much in that few seconds, and my, my emotions were changed to an extent that never, I'd never been in, in that situation before. But I, something happened uh, both spiritually and physically at that moment in time. That's where I got into the, uh, eventually got into studying uh, energy and symbols and stuff like that. But I didn't do it overnight. I was literally housebound for, I'd say, a full two years. Were you hurt, Matthew? I was, I was spiritually hurt. People would say I was mentally hurt. People, uh, people in the medical profession would say that I suffered a mental breakdown. I was trapped in a body thinking, oh, no, I haven't. I have been enlightened. It's not. It's not affected. Broke me down to the to the state where I'm a cabbage. It's actually magnified my intelligence and understanding by a million fold. If you start talking like that and they they're under the impression that you've had a mental breakdown, they're only going to see a mental breakdown. They're not going to see anything else. I understand. It was in these two years that you began to to see and uh, sense that there was something else going on with human energy and the energy of the planet. Yes, well, it, the people had, uh, that listen to you have been, have been listening to Mr. Shampoo the last few uh, weeks. They've got a, a general idea uh, of how uh, energy lines, ley lines, are supposed to work. So there's no point in me uh, talking on those sort of lines. All, all I can say is that something t- took over my, uh, my spirit, my body, whatever you want to call it, and I was personally directed to places and to, to view and see what was going on. How I used to see things before I went up the ladder, I was seeing a totally different situation. Now, as, as far as energy lines are concerned on the planet, you can imagine that a human body is, is, is full of veins that run through every limb and feed every, every, every part of your body. The planet is just the same. It's got veins running through it. it I'm not saying the, the veins run through just in the, inside the rocks and whatever. They're all round. They're in the air. They're invisible. You can't see them. It's not a thing that's underground in rocks, although the rocks and stones play a big part. It's all around human bodies. The, the planet would not exist without human life walking on it. There's no point in having a planet that's dead with no life to feed it, or no, no, uh, the planet doesn't feed the people that's on it. My experiences up the ladder took place in the, in the uh, late 90s, 1998. 1998, okay. Then I started being directed to go to places. First of all, I seemed to be challenging the authorities. I was going down, uh, fighting over taxes and uh, stuff like that, my, my job. I'd lost my job, chasing a pension, I was chasing uh, welfare benefits. I, w- I was literally, I went into battle with the authorities. And each battle I went into, I learned tremendous things from it. So that, that was just the start of it. Then some force directed me to look at certain things. And the first thing I looked into was energy lines was the Live 8 situation in 2005. It was the first thing I, one of the first things I wrote about. A a large rock festival. Well, it was a global festival, Live 8. Can you remember it? Mm Mm-hmm. There was one in Philadelphia. So there's an energy line there. I looked at that. I could see that uh, this was not a, a charity event. Then other countries... There was Germany, London, other places, France. And all the places had temples on it, some sort of temple in one, one shape or form, or a monument. At Philadelphia, obviously, it's the museum and all the Freemason monuments that's uh, around that area. Absolutely. On the Portland Freeway and all, and all in the areas. Mm-hmm. In Germany, it was the Victory Column, which is on a par with uh, your own Statue of Liberty in New York. And, and various other sites around the globe. I realised that this event was one massive sun worship ceremony. It was a, a collective worship ceremony for the sun. 
the first song that was sung in it was in Japan. Obviously, Japan's the land of the rising sun. It's the opposite to the USA. It's in the east. And the first group, pop group to sing in Live 8 in 2005 in Japan was a band called Rise. I realised even back then, before, before even Live 8 started, that there was a massive global energy thing going on. Um, they're all collective. All these monuments and temples, or, or fake temples, are all based in an area that a secret society cult use what I say as an energy point on the planet. Where they're actually having the concert event, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be a rock concert, it's an energy point on the planet. Matthew, let me stop you there and just review briefly what Dr. Carmen Bolter mentioned in her interview, and she said that the Great Pyramid was part of a global passive energy device around the globe. What you're saying right now aligns completely with, with her points that she made in the past interview. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, if you've got global events going on, and they're all going on at the same time, and they're all linked to uh, ancient sun temples, which in the, in the case of Live Aid, they are, in one way or another, Obviously, Paris, the Sun King, and Louis the Fifteenth at uh, Versailles, which is a, a, a Sun Temple, the Victory Column in Berlin, which which is also linked to the Sun. Uh, if you listeners can forget about energy lines being in the ground, and, and realise that the energy, the main, the most energy on this planet is through the human body, um, try to understand that for a, a secret society to get you to worship a, a monument, they've got to get your respect for that monument first. So the World Fairs, they place a monument in it, they get millions of people to come and see it and accept it and donate money to have it built, and then it's built where the secret society wants to build it, and it carries the permission of the, of the human race to do so. As I, as I say, it, you've got to try and forget about energies being in the rocks for a minute and imagine that there's more energy from coming from human beings and there is going through the rocks. Energy lines are nothing without a composite between human emotion and, and, and the rocks itself or the land and the air itself. Can you elaborate on that specific point just a bit more for listeners? Well, for an energy line to exist, it has to be a composite of different things. You know, you, you, if you have a copper wire going through electric cable. You've got to put the electricity through to the copper wire. The copper wire is useless on its own. It's got to uh, be two things mixed together. And that is the energy line itself, the monuments, and plus the human capacity for emotional energy? Emotion. Emotion, yes. So specifically, and then, and it's not just one person. We're talking about situations where millions or thousands and thousands are at a particular event. But you also pointed out that in your articles that it could be somebody sitting down in their living room watching television. Well, well it, it, it's the same thing. It, it, it's like a magnet can draw energy. People have been forced or coduled or tempted to focus on something. And when they do... The energy that comes through that thought, the emotion that's connected to it, travels through to that actual thought process, whatever you're thinking of. That is why religions work, because people are focusing on, uh, on a figure, Jesus being crucified. If people are, like this weekend especially, the entire planet, well, at least half of it, is focusing on a death of a figure. The point that I understand that you're making... It's we, we can't see our human energy that uh, we direct or focus on a particular deity or topic or person, and yet it's real. It's a very tangible thing, and it's being collected, as you've pointed out in numerous articles uh, on your website and in your books, which I think is very important and a missing part of some of the past guests that we have. But I think Dr. Bolter, in a past interview, had described how at one point the wireless energy of the planet was being harnessed, being managed through these megalith 
structures around the globe. Now, a lot of these megaliths have been dismantled as far as using them to their full power. It is yet still a blueprint uh, that this energy still exists, but it's now under a different management, I suppose. Yeah. And, yeah. and you've pointed out that Freemasons or uh, secret societies, some of them might be Freemasons, but it goes deeper into into the occult, into people who actually work the craft. Yeah. And they are liaisons between the fleecing the energy and something else. And we don't have to get into that right away, but I thought it was really interesting how you described these innocuous structures such as a Ferris wheel or uh, a tattoo on a celebrity's arm yeah, yeah. are uh, the vehicles to to pull uh, this energy. I'd like to comment on, on what you mentioned about the doctor there. Uh, yes, people are assuming that these places like Stonehenge were used for the benefit of mankind. As far as I'm aware, even going back a short period of time, they was not put there for the benefit of men, mankind. Mankind has always been controlled by a very, very few people. Those very few people are in, connect, were connected to forces outside of this planet. All they did was follow orders. Places like Stonehenge being built in the first place and told that people have to come uh, collectively at a certain time of year to worship there. Basically, they were bribed into saying that they were, if they did come there, they'd be healed. And if they did come there and worship, then they would have crops and they would be fed and they would be looked after and everything would be unky for them. It's the same sort of a con trick as was went on in Live 8 where millions of people were forced to go to the rock concerts and worship the rock stars. On the, on the thing, it's the same thing. A rock star on a stage is the same as a circle of rocks at Stonehenge. It's the same principle of bringing a collective group of people into one area, an energy point, where they can emotionally charge them into believing something good's going to happen by entertaining them or sacrificing people there. And therefore, the energy that they create, the human energy and the energy line combine, and that energy goes to feed whoever created the monolith, or whoever put the rock star there, or whoever put the monument there. And it's a continuous thing. Now, Stonehenge, Jeff, is an ancient monument. You mentioned Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel is a Freemasonry uh, geometric monument that was created again at the World Fairs. Pe millions of people went to the uh, World Trade Fair in, in Chicago and they accepted a new entertainment toy called the Ferris Wheel. And they all went running on it, having a ride around, laughing and joking, showing how emotional they were over this Ferris Wheel. The symbolism in the Ferris Wheel is there for everybody to see if they actually open their mind up and look what it is. Because all it is really is a sun disk and a pyramid centre, which basic geometry will tell any expert that that is in connection with a creation symbol, the primeval creation of the world, the, the Ben Ben stone rising out of the ocean and the circle disk of the Ferris wheel is the sun disk. It's all about energy, it's all about renewal, it's all about sun worship. And what the Freemasons do today, instead of building stone engines all over the place, because I'm sure the people in New York don't want a stone engine building next to the uh, Statue of Liberty, because that's what the Freemasons would have to do to get you to worship the sun a little bit more. So uh, what they've been doing for the last 10, 15 years, is they've been placing large ferris wheels around the planet on energy points where they wanted to place them. So what you get then is you get the big symbolism of the Ferris wheel, which is basically creation sun worship, and you get millions of people going to look at it in respect of it. Even if they think it's, it's silly, they still go and have a look. They're still turning up. 
it's still like a mecca for people to go and give emotion to. Now, what happens is, when people give away their emotions to something, because they're told it's one thing, it's free will emotion that they're giving away. It, it's true. It's spiritual energy. Now, I'm saying that this energy feeds a force that doesn't even exist on this planet. It is stealing the energy that we're supposed to give back to the planet. Like I said at the beginning of the interview, we eat the planet, then the planet eats us. But what's happening in between is somebody's, some leech, some person, some force, some entities have stepped in and decided to siphon off all the energy involved in it. What the, the big result is, is the planet does not run on the levels of energy it is supposed to run on. Jeff, I, I, all I can say is have patience with it. Have trust in me and trust in what I've said. And, and in the future, it'll, it'll be clearer. It will be clearer. I'm not the best person to put it across as it should be put across as far as this world's concerned. Yeah, I I'll think be... you've done fantastic, actually. Well, if I go back to another monument, back to the Statue of Liberty, because obviously this is, this is in New York, and obviously the people in New York, if they investigate the Statue of Liberty, they will realise that it was brought over from France. Well, the, the metal bit at the top was brought over from France, the statue itself. The Americans themselves built the actual Sun Temple, and the reason why they connected with, uh, with France is because the France Freemasons wanted to connect symbolically the energy lines with America. Because obviously America, as far as modern day uh, times are concerned, is a, is a new country. The, the French wanted to link up with the Americans and, and have the same symbolism and connect energy lines. What happens is, it, with statues and monuments, if a monument is, is created in one country using the metals, using the building it was made in, making a composite metal that you don't even know what, it, what, what it's made of. I mean, the Statue of Liberty is supposed to be made out of copper. But you've only, you've only their word for it. There could be alchemists that's been working on that metal, and it, may, it could be something totally different. These days, it's, the metal's hidden under a green uh, surface, a link to copper, but it could be anything. Certain rocks soak up energies. That's why we have museums. But I don't want to. Go, I don't want to go down that path. I know the path that you're talking about. I can summarize for listeners. A lot of our guests' research into museums has pointed out when you're in a museum, the architecture and the structure is uh, also a, uh, a conduit to pull human auric energy out or emotional energy out because it, you're projecting your emotional energy onto the artifacts in the museum and all of that is uh, fleeced out into maybe the cupola of the museum or other areas. It's just a brief summary. It's much deeper. Yes, I wrote, I wrote about it many years ago, yeah. Uh, as I say, the bridge, it, 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 there's been bridge after bridge after bridge. Sometimes these bridges, uh, witches were hung on them. Sometimes on these bridges, uh, people's heads were cut off and put on spikes. So you'd, you'd people's heads, uh, skulls on, on the bridges. There's so much energy put into this bridge. And what happens is, is uh, somebody in the state comes along and buys it. And they move it over to America. Normally, if there wasn't some dimensional vacuum pulling out human emotional energy, yeah. then it would feed back right into the planet and it would regenerate the planet. Well, you... that, that's what I tried to get, with it, get across with the sentence, that the Earth feeds us and we feed the Earth. That's, that's the point I'm making. All the energy we are creating, all, apart from that, just enough to sustain us, apart from just enough to keep the planet in misery, is going somewhere else. This is the point that needs to get across, you know. I'm not saying we should all stop enjoying ourselves, not go to parties. And I, I encourage parties. What I'm saying is, is there's a middleman come in that's stealing all the party atmosphere. They're stealing it, you know. They leave it. The people are still enjoying themselves at these events. There's only them events where they can enjoy themselves. That's why. That, right. That, that makes sense to me. Don't you get people that then come up to you and ask, all right, well, how do we detect this 
and stop it. It's a realisation. It's realising that the things that we are attracted to and giving emotion to are not what they appear. I will gladly go anywhere with what I know because I feel so strongly about it and try to explain it. All I can say is there's very, very few people are fully aware of what's going on on the planet. Apart from the, the few that are fully aware, there is many, many people, I'd say 20, 20% aware. That 20% awareness that I believe they have is always under attack from normal life and normal uh, existence. I'm not asking people to believe in aliens or UFOs or anything like that. only thing I ask people to do to wake up is look at how they live. Look at what they do when they're, when they're involved in rituals they don't know they're taking place. Look what, what, what you do on uh, Christmas, for example. Actually think about what you're doing. I'd, I'd recommend for the people in New York to look at. I'd recommend they go on YouTube and look at centennial celebrations over the Statue of Liberty. I think it took place in 1986. If they go on YouTube and have a look at that and with different eyes... Have a look at the Statue of Liberty. Have a look at Ronald Reagan praising the lady. Have a look at what they do with the statue, how it's lit up with fireworks and fingers and, and, and this, that, and other. Look at it from a point of view where energy is being extracted from the people that's actually stood around the monument and people that's actually watching on the TV. Because if you look at it from that point of view, you, they might learn something. Interesting, because it's all over the world, not just in the United States, as, as you've pointed out, but you, you actually tailored this interview for listeners here, and I really appreciate that. We're at the bottom of the hour, Matthew. Are you ready to take calls? Yes, you are, Matt, yeah. All right, if you have a comment or question for Matthew Deleuze, our guest, call us at 212-209-2900. We'll be right back after this break. And you're listening to Another News. I'm Jeff Brady. Our guest is Matthew Deleuze. Very grateful uh, that Matthew is here live with us because it's pretty early in the morning in the UK and really appreciate it. I want to just say that uh, Matthew's website, if you want to check that out, is matthewdeleuze.blogspot.com. And he spelled his name M A T T H E W D E L O O Z E dot blogspot.com. Matthew, I know you're ready to take calls and uh, fantastic. So we're going to go uh, to the first call here. Hi, Jeff. My name is Robin, and as always, it's a great show. I wanted to ask your guest about, um, he talked about the energy that we give to all these monuments and these places that are um, on ley lines, or um, and some people call them power places, I think in um, certain cultures or whatever. But I wanted to find out, he also mentioned like the rock concerts, like... Um, live aid and that kind of thing and it brought up some issues for me with the celebrities and rock stars as well and what I've been hearing lately is a lot of them are in secret societies and if you've noticed so many of them have been you know dying lately and um, there's been some speculation with different people as to some of their deaths are not what they seem to be. Or that, very good, strong points here. Let's uh, have Matthew just take on a little bit of this because it's uh, very deep topics that uh, go on and on and on for hours uh, to yeah. unravel this stuff. Matthew, what do you think about this? Many celebrities are in secret societies. All the top ones, the, the Michael Jacksons and the Elton Johns and people like that. Yeah, they're the top ranking in, in secret societies. And usually their death is usually related to uh, sacrificial death. Uh, they'll be murdered uh, simply to get uh, a shock across to the people to raise the energy level mm. in the people. Uh, Michael Jackson is a good example. Elvis Presley is one of the biggest examples because I, I wrote in a book about Elvis. Elvis is, is directly connected to being a sun god because he came out of sun records. If people are old enough out there, as old as me, I mean, I feel ancient these days, but if people are as old as me out there, so they may remember that Elvis Presley used to wear special suits, the big rhinestone suits with all the designs on. And the occult symbolism hidden in Elvis's suits is, is amazing if anybody wants to go and look, you know, if anybody wants to take the time. Stuff like that, yeah. 
pop concerts and pop rock venues were purposely created to ex- to extract energy from the human race. Mm. Not at all with Woodstock, obviously. Uh, in England, where, where I come from, uh, it's, it's, the biggest one is called Glastonbury. Now, at Glastonbury, they plonk a massive pyramid right on an energy line, and they get all the, uh, the drug addicts and the, the uh, rich people that go to Glastonbury, because they're mostly rich people on drugs, and the energy level inside them is raised to such a level that they're screaming every night. It's basically a drug orgy and music. It's, it, it's you know... That's how people enjoy the selling this, on this planet, and, and we have to accept that. But the energy levels behind it is all going to the symbolism that's placed on these energy lines. I, I hope the lady's happy with that, that sort of explanation. It's interesting. I don't feel like listening to any more of my CDs or albums anymore because I've been finding out this information, and it, it's creepy. It's, well, well it's, I don't suggest you give up listening to music. I mean, some music will inspire you and make you feel nice and relax you. All I can suggest you do is actually think about the music you're listening to and the lyrics and what have you and and look at the the person that's actually singing it and presenting it to you and come to your own conclusion whether they're being controlled by a a secret society and the lyrics that they're putting out to you are there just to hypnotise you or raise your emotional level redirected at them. It's, it's that sort of thing. Please don't give up listening to anything you enjoy. I'm not suggesting that at all. You know, I, I listen to music, I get pleasure out of music and stuff like that, but I do research it and I, and I do decide whether I believe a certain artist is part of a secret society. And I'm sorry to say that the vast majority of the, the superstars, the Madonnas and the Elton Johns, as I've said, I believe they're all in secret societies and they're all up to it right up to the next. Right. Uh, Robin, thank you for that call. You know, it, uh, music really took a turn at one point uh, for the worse. That's another story. We got another call. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, this is Reggie. Hey, Reggie. Yes, um, in 1986, I worked as a maritime crew member on a ship that was chartered at that uh, celebration of the Statue of Liberty. Okay. And what was the weirdest thing about it, the charter, it was uh, um, people from um, Merrill Lynch, Ch- uh, Chase Manhattan, and you had, you know, some of the heaviest financial people on that ship. And what was the weirdest thing was there was a certain set of coordinates that they wanted us to be in the harbor. And the captain said, this is so weird. Why, you know, it was like they had the, the line that our charter ship was on, and we were told it was just a very unusual Spot for us to be, but I was at the start of the ship. I was looking right at the Statue of Liberty when Reagan and all that whole ceremony thing was going down. There is a whole lot to what this man is is saying. Could he explain more the mechanism of how this energy with you know what what he's talking about is is how it works and um. You know, hey, uh, I'm a musician. I'd love to be in one of those secret societies. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, can, I can understand that. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 I must say I'm envious. That I wish I'd have been there uh, in 1986. I really do. I wish I'd have seen it in person. Obviously, I'm thousands of miles away. What I believe happens is the secret societies, the Freemasons, the serpent cult, as I call it, as part of the ritual, they have to have the, the free will permission of the people of that land to actually accept the statue. So that's why, and they've got to renew it. That's why it was renewed after 100 years. And what, they'll do, what they did then, they've got the energy of the people and the acceptance of the people. It's all about getting your acceptance and your love. They want your love towards the statue. And then, and then they, they can hijack it. <laughs> But what happened at the uh, 1986 centennial is what they did then. They moved, they moved the, it was a weekend, if I remember rightly, uh, uh, a centennial weekend, a uh, 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 Statue of Liberty weekend. And what they did then, they moved that energy to a place called the Giant Stadium. They finished the actual ritual that weekend at the Giant Stadium, which I believe is another stadium now. But, but the energy still, it, is still in that location. So what they would do to increase the energy, the energy, you'll, they'll move the, the energy point from the Statue of Liberty to a stadium so they can get more people in it. 
the thousands and thousands of people are getting to a stadium, the energy off them increases their power. All, all people are doing in this sort of thing is just giving them their wishes. It, it's like me giving you my wishes to go and do well. It, it, if you knew me personally, you'd take it as a compliment and it'd, it'd boost you. And all, all, all the secret societies are doing is doing that on a massive scale. That's why all countries are, are, are told to worship the flag. You know, we're told to be patriotic and, and do things like this. And on one level, that's very good. But on another level, if it's just taking energy off you to give it to them to go and create wars and murder and poverty, then there's something not right. But yeah, it all, it's all about getting your love and your respect and then exploiting it. That's, that's, the, that's the big thing, the exploited. And it does help uh, very much. And, caller, thank you very much for that insight. The vessel he was on was placed at a specific coordinate on that anniversary, 1986, with the heads of major banks. So uh, we really appreciate that insight. We're going to another call. Hi, you're on the air. Yes, question. Two questions, actually. The first one is, which I have a great show as usual, does New York have the same occultic way out of prominent buildings as Washington, D.C.? It's worldwide. It's massive. Wow. It's on every city. There is no major city in the, on, the, on the planet that doesn't have all these things going on. It's massive. It controls the entire planet. It's That's everywhere. Just, sure. I, I, well, I lived in Europe for many years, and you have Paris and Berlin, for sure, Vienna. Question, though, what specifically in New York do we, should we observe? I, I just want to step in one second, Matthew, and r relay some of the information the past guest mentioned, and that is uh, the nexus of ley lines is located at the and near the Statue of Liberty. And, and oh, so, God. yeah, so Matthew, you're right on target with pointing that out. And caller, I think that's the nexus. That makes sense. A last question about the, all the occultic stuff. Could you, do you know anything about the necktie, where that came from? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that one. I've never Thank researched you. that. That's really interesting. It, it does, when you stand back and you look at a person in a suit, you can see the compass and square element mm -hmm. there. That's observant. Thank you. Thank you, caller. We're going to go to another call. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, Jeff. Uh, hey, Matt. Brandon here. Hey. Oh, yeah. I have personal experiences, and Jeff you and I have spoken about altered states. I recall certainly the actually iridescent red and blue lines entering and leaving the solar plexus area, connecting into the, a net of all of them from all people. And I'm wondering whether this is the same field that you're talking about that you call the auric field, that, that we humans are maybe like the copper top in the movie The Matrix, that we have bioenergy. And what are we connecting then? Maybe, Matt, as a geophysicist, I would say that we ground the Earth, we connect also to the uh, atmosphere and into the solar winds, so to speak. So is it not that the shamans and others have had this knowledge that uh, places like Devil's Tower are you know, already present as collector sites where people have come? So isn't it a lot of this hackneyed type of tower built by modern technologies really uh, a aberrant, uh, degenerative uh, sort of approach to what is really simply done shamanically and by the people who really have an insight through experience. Well, well yeah, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, yes, uh, all that's gone on in, in modern day ta uh, times is the secret societies have changed uh, natural uh, energy points and put uh, buildings on them. I mean, I, I've done work with uh, Ferris wheels. And people laugh and joke about Ferris wheels, but the geometry behind them is uh, is an amazing uh, modern day version of the natural creation of planet Earth, simply because of the sun disk, the circle of the Ferris wheel, and the pyramid in the middle of the Ferris wheel represents the rising of the Ben Ben stone from the the watery chaos. Are you being are chaos. you being coy, coy with us to not say who is the then puppeteer? Is it you know, like? A negative a group that is not of this earth or dimension. So, are you unable to or unwilling to ex just simply say to us that we should say encourage our connection with the forces, like in the movies, Star Wars, the force flows through us and around us and binds us together, uh, that it can be turned against us 
In other words, are there guidelines for us in a day-to-day to make sense of the powers that really are at our fingertips? We can join in common effort to maybe make a good outcome, the tipping points that we talk about, to uh, right the top and not have it wobble and fall over. Well, all I can suggest, uh, and, uh, and that's all I do suggest, is people actually look around at what they do instead of blindly going from day True. to day yeah. in a dream. Because when I first started uh, understanding things, the, the, the biggest thing I learned was just to watch what I did every day and ask myself why I was doing it. Right. And that led me down the path to realize that uh, I wasn't even in control of my own life. And I realized then that uh, everything I did was, 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 was by the will of somebody else. It wasn't mine. And then once you start going down that path, then you start to realize that the people that's on, that claim to uh, control this planetary religion and politics don't actually do so. There is somebody, there is some force controlling that. And that, that force has literally hijacked this planet. Yeah. It's exploiting all our energy lines, both on the planet and in the human body. Then we can take it back. We can take it back once you realize it's going on. Jeff, I'm on board. Thank you very much for that call. And just remember, the uh, as Matthew Deleuze has pointed out here, just the human energy uh, that is given out at these events and festivals, even when you're sitting at your TV, would naturally cycle back into and feed the Earth. But as we're hearing, there's a middleman siphoning it off planet, which might explain that odd something doesn't sit right feeling. Uh, we're going to go to another call. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, Matthew. This is Lucy. Hi, Lucy. I've been waiting six years to tell you, may love reign over you. (laughs) Ditto, flower, ditto. It's great to hear you. You're very enlightening, and I encourage everybody to go to his blog spot and check out the information and come to your own conclusions, and I will clear the line for the next caller. Bye-bye, Matthew. Love you. Love to you, uh, thank you very much for that call. Hi, you're on the air with Matthew Deleuze. Yes, hi. Good evening. It's Alan from Flushing calling. Good evening, Matthew. Well, good morning, Matthew. And hi, Jeff. I'm doing okay. I'm calling from Flushing, which is uh, right nearby where there were two major events in New York City, the World's Fairs. Yes. Back in 3940 and 64-65. Uh, yeah. I was told a long time ago that the way that the World's Fairs in, in, in the Flushing were built the main avenue, if you were to extend an imaginary line, would bisect the Statue of Liberty. And it wasn't until I heard Peter Shampo on Jeff's show a few weeks ago that I actually did that. I took a, um, a Google map and, and drew the line, and it was perfect, not even a degree off. Yeah. My, and I thought it was quite interesting. It, it goes through the globe. The, uh, we have the Unisphere, which is the world's largest globe at that uh, site as well. Yeah. And this well, line intersects that. Well, I, I, I'm more expert on uh, on Mr. Shampoo's. Uh, I call him Mr. Shampoo, but I'm more expert on Mr. Shampoo's yeah. stuff. But what I can tell you is, I have researched world fairs, and people should start to uh, realise that these world fairs were the, were the uh, satellite TV of, of their time. All the world went to see them. Interesting. What, what, what they did at these world fairs is they placed their occult monuments there for people to come and respect them before the placed them uh, permanently. The Statue of Liberty, for example, was the arm of the Statue of Liberty was, was placed uh, at a World Fair in Philadelphia. And they got, uh, what happened was is millions of people went to see that and then that created the energy to build it and place it in uh, New York. It's not just the Statue of Liberty that comes out of the World Fairs. The Eiffel Tower came out of the World Fair. The, 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 the bloke that built the Eiffel Tower was linked with the Statue of Liberty and the Freemasons. There is a, a massive monument which I've studied myself, uh, Atomium in, in Brussels. That was built by a World Fair. So you have a secret society that creates World Fairs. You get millions of people to come and have a look at it and encourage it and give love to the monuments that's there. And that gives them the power to, to place them permanently on the planet and use, use them against humanity by attracting the energy from humanity through their monuments. It's all a case of uh, deception, conning the energy out of you and then exploiting it. And it, 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 the same thing happens time and time and time again. And the World Fairs, if people really look into them, they'll see where the monuments actually 
are, are born, really. The, the monuments are born at the World Fairs, the major monuments of this planet. Hmm. And I have a follow-up, a quick question. I don't know if you can answer it or not, but what is the width of an energy line? Do they vary in size and width? Uh, the energy lines that I fe- I've actually felt and been on, they haven't actually been in the ground, they've been in the air. I, I went through a very traumatic experience in, in 1998, and I was, I was actually uh, around 30 foot up in the air. Uh, I was in a, a clean room of an aerospace factory, which was surrounded in carbon fibres and, and chemicals. I don't know whether that had anything to do with it, but I felt a, a massive, massive punch of energy 30 foot up in the air. I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I couldn't tell you how wide it was. It just knocked me. It just knocked me for six. I've also been to South America on several places, and I've felt the same energy there. But it's always been above ground. I've never felt energy from the ground. So, you know, my experiences and not from energy lines in the ground, they're actually above the ground, uh, flying through the air, uh, you know. Very good explanation and great questions. Thank you very much, Alan, from Flushing. And we got another call. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing, Jeff? Hey, Ed, how's it going? I'm all right. And yeah. how you doing, uh, Mr. Deloof? Um, I just had a, a couple of questions. Number one, how can you measure or quantify this human energy that you talk about? I believe in the power of the human spirit, but I don't know how, how how would you go about collecting it if you were a foreign or alien entity and and using it for your own purposes nefarious or otherwise. Is there, Ed, is Ed, can you hold on a second? I think we may have lost Matthew. Are you there, Matthew? No, I'm sorry, man. Okay. Well, well, a quick explanation is is the human race is so dumbed down that it, it never realizes how it's happening. That's how the uh, the multidimensionals get away with it. Uh, you know, their intellect is a thousand times higher than ours. They're operating on an intelligence far beyond our comprehension. So how, how can somebody that's trapped in the vibrations of this planet actually explain it? It's like explaining how does electricity run through a cable, you know? How can you perceive it? I can explain how electricity runs through something through the process of movement of electrons. What I'm talking of is the experiences I went through, which were as a spiritual experience. It was an epiphany type of experience. So I'm basically... I connected with a, uh, an energy line myself, and I received this information through that sort of thing. Now that might seem like I'm totally a lunatic or something, but that's the way. I, that's the, but that's what happened to me. And uh, giving a job of passing on that information and trying to translate it and uh, un- make people understand it is like uh, putting a warehouse full of information into a matchbox, and it's, it's literally impossible to do so. Current, uh, at this current time with the current uh, intellect on this planet. Uh, our guest, Matthew Deleuze, uh, thank you very much uh, for being on In Other News, and that'll do it.